For a long time now, the term cybersecurity has almost been synonymous for penetration testing or ethical hacking, especially with those less familiar with the industry. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. There are a load of different roles within cyber today, and we're going to go over a few of them, giving you a general idea about what the role entails, how much experience is required, what level of technical requirement you need, and generally how much it typically pays. So let's get straight into it. Kicking it off with the Security Operations Center Analyst. A SOC analyst is a great place to start your cyber career with a low barrier of entry, medium technical requirements, and a good level of pay with great career progression. A SOC analyst typically is the first responder to real-time security events and alerts. This could be anything from an employee trying to install some pirated software, taking home sensitive documents, or potentially something a bit more sinister, like attacks from an actual hacker. A SOC analyst will review these tickets and perform triage on the affected system to determine what the impact actually is. Serious incidents are typically escalated to more senior analysts, often referred to as a level two or level three SOC analyst. They're also often responsible for monitoring the health of the security information and event management system, otherwise known as SIEM infrastructure. Analysts typically progress through multiple levels over their career while upskilling and gaining multiple certifications for each level. This can also lead people down to the next role, which is the incident responder and digital forensics analyst. Also known as Cypher or DIFA, responders typically are external consultants hired to assess a serious breach, likely from a threat actor. Responders are typically quite experienced in cybersecurity by the time they reach this role and have a very good understanding of technical concepts like operating systems, networks, and much more. Incident responders are typically quite well paid, but this does come at being on call 24-7. Like a SOC analyst, a responder will perform triage and forensics on the breach. However, they perform it at a much deeper level. Often responders will also need to expel the threat actor, basically a fancy word for hacker, from their client system, which can be an incredibly difficult task. Responders can also take on additional roles such as reverse engineering malware to understand what it does and how it does it, as well as performing tabletop exercises with their clients to understand how they would respond to a breach and also perform threat hunts. These tabletop breaches can be fueled with information provided by a cyber threat intelligence analyst. Cyber threat intel is one of the cooler roles within cyber, and an intel analyst typically isn't so much hands on the tool as it's a less technical role. However, analysts perform ongoing investigation of known threat actors, such as, as well as their techniques, tactics, and procedures, or TTPs. Monitoring the dark web activity to understand the threats clients might face. They also invest, investigate previous breaches to understand the failures of the organization and what TTPs were used in that breach. At the time of writing, the threat intel analyst is a bit of a niche role that companies are only just starting to understand their value. So this really is a growing space. This role can be quite junior friendly, especially if you have some mentorship and some self-motivation. And as well, the salary can greatly range based on experience, but I'd place it somewhere in the middle of cyber salaries. Next, we have the governance, risk and compliance consultant. This stays on the topic of less technical roles. A GRC consultant basically reviews an organization's compliance when it comes down to their cybersecurity posture. There are many different competing standards which organizations can uphold to, and it's up to the GRC assessor to know the relevant frameworks for their state. Typically ISO 27000 and 27001 are the ones that often get thrown around. However, there are many others, such as the Information Security Manual, which is here in Australia. GRC can pay very well for a skilled and experienced consultant. For entry level positions, one would likely work in a consulting firm, assisting a lead to gather information for the assessment. Now onto one you may have never heard of, Digital Identity and Access Management, otherwise known as IAM. IAM integration is typically a large project taken by a large organization or government department. Often this involves rolling out a specific IAM platform and integration into the organization's environment. 
This is a technical role that can attract someone from quite junior in their career to somebody quite senior. IAM analysts will typically work with various organizational departments and business units to understand their internal policies, access requirements and systems and provision their required access. IAM work is typically project-based, so an integrator will move around from client to client performing similar tasks to understand the requirements of each business and design and integrate accordingly. Now we have the security engineer. This really is an umbrella term for people who are typically hands-on building systems used to protect other systems and networks. This can include deploying software, configuring networks, managing users, and generally locking down infrastructure to prevent attacks. Security engineering is a technical job requiring good networking and operating system fundamentals, along with a general understanding of cybersecurity concepts. However, this is another role ideal for juniors getting into the, the field. Pay might not start off quite as high, but with experience, a security engineer can quickly move up the career ladder and potentially even move into our next role, the security architect. For those who are big picture people, the security architects are those who are designing the security controls and infrastructure for any given project, which is then integrated and de deployed by the security engineers. Typically working as a consultant, an architect is a senior and well-paying role, which requires a strong technical background, but isn't typically hands-on in integrating the solution. They design the complex security structure down to each individual server, operating system, transport protocols, encryption, and much more. Architects will also design all the required infrastructure for a project as well as be influential with other decision makers to ensure that the security posture of any given project is upheld and treated as a priority. Architects must remain up to date with security trends, exploits, vulnerabilities, tools, and design methodologies to ensure the architecture of their project is resilient against attacks. Security management. Again, this is a bit of an umbrella term. A security manager is often more a senior role, which typically pays quite well, but it's off the back of a lot of experience in some of the roles we've already been discussing in this video. Typically, a security manager will be responsible for some or all organization's security operations, infrastructure, and facilities. This role can be quite vague and does have a bit of an overlap with GRC. The main objective is to reduce the overall cyber risk that the organization faces, managing budgets, staffing, tooling in the process. Some security managers will be assessing their own organization's compliance to GRC standards, or if large enough, hiring consultants to do it for them. Security managers may also to some extent have project management within their list of responsibilities. They also may lead the delivery of security projects such as new networks, infrastructure, identity systems, or managing external consultants who may be there to perform penetration testing or tabletop exercises. This role can be quite broad and really depends on the specific organization for a full list of responsibilities. Now we have the top dog, the Chief Information Security Officer, otherwise known as a CISO. This perhaps is the most well-paying role within cyber. This is an executive level position reporting directly to the CEO of an organization and the board. As a CISO, the buck stops with you. You're responsible for the entire organization's security posture. While not hands-on, a CISO will steer the organization in a direction that meets the growing requirements of a cyber resilient organization. CISOs will likely hire consultants to perform various activities like penetration testing, GRC, shred hunts, and overall security uplift projects. And lastly, we have the penetration tester or ethical hacker. There are a few main jobs that a penetration tester can do, and these are vulnerability scanning. Typically, when a tool is used to perform mass scanning of a network and vulnerabilities are reported back. Web application pen testing, the manual hands-on penetration test of web applications, identifying vulnerabilities and trying to breach the underlying server. Internal and external network penetration testing, trying to infiltrate the organization's infrastructure either in internally to the network or external internet facing infrastructure. Adversary simulations, otherwise known as red or purple teaming. These are full-sized simulations designed to breach organizations through almost any means. This can include phishing, web attacks, physical entry to plant a device, and moving laterally to attain a specific target. 
Penetration testing is one of the most desirable fields within cyber and thus is one of the most competitive. A very strong fa technical foundation is required to be successful and to stand out from the competition. Penetration testing also has a seemingly never ending list of certificates to attain. However, it is one of the more interesting roles and can lead to multiple other senior roles later down the track. It is very well paying, but certainly not the top paying field within cyber. So let's wrap up. These are just some of the common roles within cyber that we've gone through today. Some roles may include a mix of what, what we discussed or go by slightly different names. It all varies depending on organization size, the country and culture. But this should give you a general idea and hopefully some of these have caught your interest to develop your own cybersecurity career. For those who are de developing their cybersecurity career, this video might help you out where I go over the common mistakes I see junior people make within cybersecurity. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.